Shalom, Ya Allah, um, Islam to the Moors, and Assalamu Alaikum to the Muslims, brothers and sisters, and Hotep to the Egyptologists, yo, you know me, Tyler Dot, for our people of the melanated skin, um, and if, even if you don't agree with my beliefs in my creator, then we can still come together on the fact that we are of the melanated, melanated skin, and chances are, you are one of us. But that's another topic. So what I wanted to talk to you today about is because I haven't done a video in a while. Don't really have a lot of time for these videos. Um, first thing I want to put out there is there's going to be a seminar, um, Freedom from Servitude seminar coming up in July the 16th in Dallas, Texas. Um, for more information, check my Facebook page. Um, for a flyer, or you could check our website, um, www.creditors, debtors, contracts, and commerce.org, and you go to the page for seminars and lectures, and you click on that page, you'll see a flyer there with the information on how you could donate online or how you could actually pay at the door. So with that being said, what I wanted to talk to you about today was actually separation of the straw man and the living soul, breaking the chains of commercial slavery, land of the free, home of the slaves. So I'm actually going to go into some history, but the first thing I want to do is to actually, you know, expound on what it takes to be great, because many of us lacks that ability. So we actually need someone or some incentive or some structure to actually facilitate to us what it actually requires us to be great. So with that being said, as usual, I want to say that this is not legal advice. Um, I do not offer legal advice. We do not offer legal advice. If you need legal advice, seek yourself a competent counsel and then please be advised. What I'm about to give you is strictly for educational, informational, and to those of you that find this as a form of entertainment, entertainment purposes only. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how you, despite what you actually have been told, despite what has actually been embedded into your thoughts. You can be great. You can be whatever it is that you desire to be if you believe in you starting from right now at this moment. And today, your brother, your Kahan Tazadak is going to facilitate to you how you can do that. And thereafter, I'm going to actually go into some history on how this de facto that many of you refer to as government is actually moving towards totally extracting the Bible and God from this nation, which is essentially what it was constructed upon. And I know many of you are not clear on how that, because many of you have actually been, you know, inquiring to yourselves over the years, why does Taza Doc stay in that Bible so much when he's talking law? Because as I've stated time and again, this system of law was actually constructed from the Bible, from the Constitution, from the... um. Declaration of Independence from the um, Mayflower Compact. All of that was taken from our Bible. And if, I, if given time, if you would give me approximately 30 to 45 minutes of your time, you're going to find out today how and why it is imperative that you actually know these scriptures if you want to truly master law. Two of the things that every American used to know was the Bible and how to use a weapon. But now you have to ask for permit for your weapon. You have to ask someone for permit showing you 
that the system has failed you. So with this de facto, you have corrupt politicians that are actually pushing for rights of transgenders to go into the men's or ladies' room. You have, they're pushing for a man to be able to go into a bathroom with a five-year-old, 13-year-old girl or with women. And you know what's going to transpire from that. We don't have to tell you. It is apparent. But it shows you the wickedness and corruptness of this system and why you should get your minds right with right knowledge and separate yourself from the wickedness of this system that is actually going to come down according to the word of the creator, according to the Bible. So, brothers, sisters, if you don't want to be a part of this wickedness, if you want to be great, when you want to be great, folks, you usually have family members or one that is actually supposed to be your close friend or even your lover, like a husband or a wife, tell you that you cannot obtain your greatness. And the reason that they do this is because they don't want you to be great because they feel as if you will disassociate yourself with them. Now, they will actually move to prevent you from accomplishing your vision, your goals, your greatness. Now, I am not certain what your dreams are, folks, brothers, sisters. You may have some far-fetched dream. And it may seem that at times that it is not possible to accomplish your dreams. But one thing that I am certain of is that if you believe, if you believe, then it is possible that you can accomplish your dreams and your goals. It is possible if you believe because everything thoughts from a thought. That thought must first manifest in your mind, and it must be a positive thought. So one of the first things that you have to do is to rid yourself of negative energy, of negative people. You have to disassociate yourselves from negative people and negative energy because they move on a lower vibration. And you have to affiliate yourself with people that is positive and are moving on a higher vibration. You cannot allow anyone to deter you from your dreams, from your visions, from your goals. Now, most of all, you do not allow you. You are the number one person that would actually prevent you from accomplishing your dreams and your goals. So most importantly, you do not allow you to prevent you from your dreams with negative thinking. Self-negation. Self-negation, doubt, and negative energy will destroy your dreams and your goals. Now, if you affiliate with negative people or gravitate to negative energy, you will be a failure or no more than average. See, with me, average is not acceptable. Failure is not acceptable. And to fail does not mean that you are a Failure. Because if you fall down 10 times, you need to get up 11. Failure is not acceptable. It's okay to fail as long as you get back up. Now, you must eliminate doubt and negative energy. Or you will destroy your dreams and goals. I cannot overemphasize that. And if you affiliate with negative people or gravitate to negative energy, you would just be average or you would be a failure. You must, you must, you must surround yourself with positive energy and positive people if you want to be great. So from this moment forward, you can decide that you will be part of that 1%. That 1% that is pristine that is spectacular in what they do. Or you can continue to be average or be a failure. Now, to do so, one of the first things that you must do is you must listen to this video at least 10 times because repetition is the father of learning. It must be embedded into your thoughts until it actually becomes a natural response. 
it would be instinctual for you to think and act a certain way. So it is time to stay focused, folks. It is time to forget about the clubs. It is time to forget about getting high and hanging out with Johnny and, you know, um, Laquita and so on and so forth. It is time to get about hanging out, um, smoking hookers and so on and so forth um, and being part of all that negative shit. All of that negative shit, excuse my French, it's not going anywhere. You need to stay focused on your goals, on your dreams, and on your visions. And then you have to strive to get there. So, how's it done? Some people say, why does it take you so long to get back to me? How's it done? Why don't you hang out with me anymore? How's it done? I called you six, seven times. I, I, I don't hear from you anymore. How's it done? How come you're not coming over to the hood anymore? Because I'm trying to get it, homie. I'm trying to get mine, homie. How's it up? You can't just hang out and be cool anymore? No, homie. Because I'm trying to get mine, homie. See, it's grind season for Taz Adop. Now, you ask yourself this question. What are you doing every day of your life? What are you doing with your life every day? Is it just passing you by? What are you doing? Every day of your life, are you creating a distraction and obstacles or are you soaring to new heights because you've actually invested time or as much time in your dreams and your goals that you possibly can until you become the best at what you do or are you creating your own distraction or are you affiliated with people that is causing a distracting, a distraction and preventing you from attaining your goals and dreams. Do you have eyesight or do you have mind sight? That is an imperative question. Do you judge on what you see with your eyes or have you learned that what is essential is invisible? To the eyes. See, what's essential is invisible to the eyes. And I contend that the eyes are the most inaccurate part of our bodies when we are using them to determine what is essential. When we use them to, to determine what's essential, when we should be using our minds. And then we wonder why we end up fucked up. Pardon my lingo. And your relationships, and your marriage, and your goals, because you're using your eyes to determine what's essential instead of your minds. You you are focused on what looks good to the eye, but that is not what's essential. That sister out there may have a banging body. Damn, you say, damn, that sister's bad, but that's carnal as hell. Oh, he looks good. He has a nice chest. The sister say he got a nice whip, nice car. You're looking at the eye. You're, you're using your eyes to try to determine what's essential when you should examine their mind. Oh, well, she looks nice, but what is her mind like? It, could, could she possibly be submissive? Will she see me as her head? Will she see me as her partner? Or will she try to be Miss Independent? Because it, when you add it up, and I deal with mathematics, Miss Independent usually ends up as Miss Lonesome and by myself, let the truth be told. So you cannot judge with your eyes to determine what is essential. It is only with the mind that you can see what's essential. See, you're focused on what looks good to the eyes. You're not using your mind. Therefore, you abort the path of success, happiness, because you are stuck in a materialistic world. You're feeding your vanity by the things that you see. You are focused on what looks good to the eyes. You are not feeding your soul and your mind because you are so damn carnal and the only thing you feed is your body.
and the vast majority of the people in society is overfeeding their damn bodies. If you count, if you, if you doubt what I'm saying, count the next 10 people that pass you and 6 out of 10 will be obese. Will be obese and overweight. Now this is not to denounce anyone, but it shows you that most people are feeding their bodies and not necessarily feeding their minds with right knowledge. Because if you are wise, you would know that you shouldn't be sitting there stuffing your damn face, overeating, overindulging in food. Because it's a hazard to your health. See, I woke out, but... I could actually have a muscular body. And what, let me put this out there. Because there are some people, they look real good on the outside. You might say, oh, she has a real nice figure. Or he's very muscular. See, I work out and I could have a really um, nicely built muscular body. But if I'm not taking proper care of my body, I could be fucked up internally. I could have bad organs. You know, I could have a bad kidney. And so on and so forth. So you must have a clear mind to have a great body. Because if your body is in good shape and your mind's not clear, you're going to destroy it just like you do to your own communities. So stop looking at the outside. Your remedy comes from within. And everyone wants to look outside of themselves for answers because it's light outside. It's light on the outside. But you got to look within. Within is dark and it's scary because people do not want to change. People do not want to examine themselves. Each time a, prize, a, a problem arise, arouse or arise, you want to point the finger and blame someone else instead of assume, assuming responsibility and asking yourself the question, how did I cater to that problem in my relationship? How did I aid to causing this problem? And whatever it may be. So you got to look within. If you look within, you will sore up your problems because all of your problems come from within. Don't tell me, Taz Adopt, I just don't have the money to become a secured party creditor. See, that's an excuse. With all of this opportunity out here now, don't tell me because nobody has had it more difficult to me. Don't tell me you can't come up with the money to become a secured party creditor. Because that's the medium exchange that they use now for us to obtain the things that we need. So we have to use some medium of exchange on the private side. And you and I are on the private side. So instead of telling me, oh, I can't get it. I just don't have the means. Well, go out and sell fucking snow cones. Do what you got to do, homie. As long as you're not hurting someone else or causing injury. Go out and do hit. Go out and sell newspapers. But don't tell me you can't. Don't tell me you can't do it because it's a negative energy. You're always looking for a handout. Nothing great comes by someone just giving you something. Go and sell fucking snow cones. Go and mow the lawn. You're not having money actually should compel you to be more creative and come up with new ideas. Don't tell me you can't get money. You got to think. And when you don't have money, it should require you to think more. And you could come up with even more brilliant ideas. It's like exercising your muscle. The more you work it, the stronger it becomes. The more you overload it. The mind works the same way. The mind is a muscle. The brain is a muscle. The more you work it, the more you use it to think, the stronger it becomes. So don't tell me you can't. I don't feel sorry for you. Get out there and do it. You feel sorry for yourself. Don't tell me how hard it is again because no one has had it more difficult than Taza Duck. Don't tell me I'm having a bad time, Taza Duck. No one had it harder than me. See, you can be whatever you want to be and do whatever it is that you want to do, but you first must believe. You must believe. What do you want? 
to be remembered for? Do you want to be remembered for being a loser? Or someone that said, I can't? Stop giving me excuses. Stop giving up and keep on striving. I did not get any help. No one didn't hand anything to me. No one wrote me alone. No one gave me jack. But I never gave up. And if you want your dreams and your visions to happen, get up off of your butt and start grinding. It's grind season, homies. The fight, the greatest fight, the greatest battle. I'm going to say this. And then I'm going to leave it as that. The greatest battle that you ever will have to fight is within your mind. Do you hear me? The greatest battle that you ever have to fight within, it is within your mind. And with that, I want you to watch part two of this video. I'm going to bring this one to an end. You've actually been under the sound of your Ak Kahan Tazada Shah Bay. I'm just an aggrieved man. I'm not your educator. I'm not your savior. The only thing I know is I'm just an aggrieved man. That's all I am. And I know that according to my creator, when I read the scriptures, Genesis 1 and 18, it tells me that the creator gave man the dominion and rulership over all. So that means the judges, the lawyers, the sheriffs, the constables on patrol are all subservient to me in my proper capacity. But if you don't know how to be a man, if you want to be a citizen or a corporation, then you are a damn slave. And you have to ask for permission to have a weapon. You have to ask for permission to go out and move your um, conveyance from point A to point B. You have to ask for permission because you are subject to the very government that you've created, which is not a government, by the way, anymore. It's a de facto. It is a democracy. See, under a democracy, you get um, people that pass statues and call them laws, and then you get gays out screaming, we want our rights. But the principles that this nation was built on, which is the Bible, it tells us that unless they repent, a homosexual should be put to death. Now, if this government was actually constructed on Judeo-Christian principles, I challenge any of you damn politicians. Why? Well, the laws of the creator is not being enforced. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence was actually basically built from the Bible. So be sure to tune into that lecture. Once again, I'm going to say Shalawam, Yasha Allah, Kwam Yasha Allah. I'm going to say Assalamu Alaikum to the Muslim Islam, to the Moors, and Hotep to the Egyptologists, and peace and love to the black family. The Brother Tyler Doc is out. Shalawam, Shalom.